Hail and well met, and welcome to Dungeon Mastiff, a channel about creating original D&D content right here for you. Please consider supporting us on Patreon at Dungeon Mastiff or subscribing to let us know you've liked this channel. Today's quick note is that I have gone a really, really long time without uploading, and I plan to upload a little more regularly, maybe once a week for about a month, and then back to a regular once per two weeks upload schedule. Alright, today we'll be taking a look at 20 things that you didn't know about D&D. Make sure to comment down below how many out of 20 you knew. Alright, let's dive right in. Number 1. If you ever wanted to know which class is the most fun to play, here's your answer. According to a poll run by D&D Beyond in 2018 titled, What is your favourite class to play and why? The most popular class was Wizard, winning with 13.8% of the vote. Warlocks were a close second with 13.1%, and Bard was third with 10.6%. Number 2. Sometimes when you're reading the player's handbook or the monster manual, it never seems like it's going to finish. However, these two books are far from the longest in D&D history. The player's handbook has 320 pages, while the monster manual has 352. But the longest D&D book ever released is 2E's Monstrous Manual, clocking in at 384 pages and containing 713 monsters. Wow. Number 3. With Wizards of the Coast raking in $952 million in 2021, it seems like D&D is on the rise again. Most of this money is made from the purchase of D&D books and modules, which begs the question, what is the most sold D&D book? You could probably guess this one, but it's the Player's Handbook, as you can basically not play without it. In 2018, the Player's Handbook topped at the 21st most sold book on Amazon. Wow. Number 4. With all this popularity in D&D, it makes sense that Wizards of the Coast would want to capitalise on that by expanding D&D into other forms of media. Therefore, the D&D movie was born. Released on the 18th of January 2001, it had a budget of $45 million, but it flopped at the box office, only making $33 million. Number 5. The most damage possible in one single round is technically infinite, as there are certain spells and effects that reduce creatures to zero hit points, no matter how many hit points they have first. But for one melee attack by one character, the most damage I could find is from a stack exchange forum, where user Nathan S calculated that with a level 9 Half Orc Tempest Cleric, level 9 Bard College of Whispers, level 5 Hunter Ranger, and level 2 Paladin Character, attacking with a Great Axe and casting Booming Blade, as well as all of these other conditions, the maximum damage with additional items like Purple Worm Poison is 1176 damage. Ouch. Number 6. D&D has actually patented a few of its most iconic monsters, so you can't use them in any sort of publication of your own without special permission from Wizards of the Coast. These monsters are the Beholder, the Carrion Crawler, the Displacer Beast, the Gith including the Gith Yanghi and the Gith Zerai, the Mind Flayer, the Umber Hulk, the Slard, and the UNT. Number 7. D&D is called D&D for a reason, Dungeons and Dragons, and without dragons or without monsters it wouldn't be what it is now. So the very first monster introduced into D&D was from the Advanced D&D First Edition Monster Manual, where the first entry under A is Aerial Servant. The Aerial Servant is described in the manual as a quote, semi-intelligent form of an air elemental. Number 8. While we're on the topic of firsts in D&D, the first standalone D&D module ever released was called The Palace of the Vampire Queen, and it was not created by TSR, who owned D&D at the time. Instead, it was created by a third-party company called We Warriors in 1976 and distributed by TSR until late 1977. The module describes a queen who has been transformed by a vampire and has set up a lair on the island of Baylor. The vampire queen has taken the king's daughter and trapped her in the queen's lair. The adventurers must rescue the daughter and slay the vampire queen. Very cool. Number 9. One of the things that I like most about D&D is its attention to detail and cool hidden easter eggs. One of these interesting easter eggs is that the Minotaur, despite having very low intelligence, can navigate its way out of any maze without trouble. This is a reference to Greek mythology, where the Minotaur resides in a labyrinth so complex only the Minotaur can navigate it because of an innate ability to solve mazes, having grown up in one. Number 10. Another monster fact is from the Periton, which is described as having the body similar to that of a giant eagle, whilst being 7 feet long and 5 feet tall. However, the Periton's head is that of a deer, with a maw full of jagged fangs. 
The most interesting feature of a periton is its shadow, which resembles the outline of the creature whose heart the periton last ate. Additionally, the only time a periton casts its own shadow is after killing a victim, but before eating it. Very interesting, and this could make for a cool D&D puzzle or riddle. Number 11. The Dungeon Master's Guide presents six alternative combat actions. Instead of just attacking, you can instead disarm, forcing a contest between the disarmer's attack role and the defender's athletics or acrobatics role to disarm a weapon they are holding, or you could tumble through a hostile creature's space as a bonus action, triggering an acrobatics contest between you and the hostile creature. These actions can make combat a lot more interesting than the same attack action over and over again, and I highly encourage any dungeon masters out there to get your players using these actions as well. Number 12. We all know the Tarask, possibly the most dreaded monster in D&D. However, whilst Tarasks have the highest challenge rating in D&D, they aren't the most powerful monster by a long shot. All of the Tarask's attacks deal either non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage, except for the Swallow, which can only affect creatures large or smaller grappled by it. Additionally, the Tarask is immune to any non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical weapons. The only creature that can bypass this is the CR-23 Empyrean. Even though the Empyrean is easier to beat than the Tarask, since it only does one attack per round compared to five for a Tarask, the Empyrean would easily beat a Tarask in a fight, because all of its attacks are magical, and it is immune to any damage done to it by the Tarask. Number 13. Many people wonder how the founder of D&D, Gary Gygax, came up with the complex and mystical worlds that D&D is set in. Well, D&D was partially inspired by Gygax's childhood, where he would spend hours playing in an abandoned insane asylum. This inspired some of the descriptions and atmospheres for future dungeons he would create. Number 14. With a reach weapon, a player choosing to play as a bugbear can reach a total of 15 feet with a melee weapon, or about 4.5 meters long, longer than a Volkswagen Beetle, which is about 4 meters long. This is the longest reach accomplishable in D&D. However, a bugbear can only apply this special reach modifier to melee attacks, meaning that it can still only grab objects 5 feet away from it. Number 15. Did you know that there is only one monster in D&D that doesn't deal any damage? The Shrieker is a CR0 plant with 5 armor class and 13 hit points that has only one action to emit an audible shriek up to 300 feet away from it if a bright light comes within 30 feet of it. This is an interesting monster that can make ambushes an ordeal for your unsuspecting party. Number 16. One extremely useful spell, if you have the many costly materials, you probably haven't used before, is Simulacrum, a 7th level illusion spell. The spell creates an illusory duplicate of a target beast or humanoid until the spell is dismissed. The Simulacrum has all the statistics of the creature it was duplicated from, except it has half of the creature's maximum hit points and no equipment. The Simulacrum acts on your verbal commands and is an ally of your party. It cannot regain expended spell slots or hit points. However, it can be repaired at an alchemical laboratory, with 100 gold pieces worth of ingredients needed to restore one hit point of the simulacrum. A very useful late game spell if you have the time and the money to cast it. Number 17. Speaking of spells, one of the most useless spells in D&D is Skyrite, a second level transmutation spell introduced in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Not only is the spell a concentration spell, meaning you can't concentrate on other more useful spells, but you can only write 10 words in the sky, and these words can be dispelled at any time by strong winds, ending the spell. This spell has almost no use and can easily be counted, making it one of the worst spells in D&D. Number 18. Xanathar's Guide to Everything also included common magic items, including the Cloak of Billowing, which, as a bonus action, you can make the cloak billow dramatically, or the Dread Helm, which makes your eyes glow red when wearing it. Despite these cosmetic items, there are actually some useful items for early level characters, as a common magic item is cheap and can provide a useful boost to essential stats. For example, the Hat of Wizardry can be used as a spellcasting focus, and you can use it to cast a cantrip you don't know by succeeding a DC 10 Arcana check. Number 19. There are 13 classes in D&D at the base game, yet with many new releases such as Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and Xanathar's Guide to Everything, there are about 120 total subclasses which is a tremendous amount of content. Finally, number 20. D&D 5th Edition is a great D&D system, the best in my opinion, but there is always more improvement, so Wizards of the Coast announced that they would be releasing D&D 6th Edition in 2024 to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Dungeons & Dragons.
I for one am very excited to see how this plays out. So that was 20 things you didn't know about D&D. Remember to comment below how many out of 20 you knew, and subscribe if you liked the video. Two other videos are popping up on screen now so go check them out as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.